a good question for four marks uh, from physical portion that can test your concepts really well now <clears throat> but still there is an easy way to solve it and then there is a difficult way to solve it it's not an easy way uh, but it's a shortcut method so it basically when you are giving net exam you have a very short amount of time so you need to be really quick and fast and you, you need to work smartly but anyway i am here to build your concepts as well as tell you the smart way to do the work so those those of you who have already uh, like already know the question and you want to find the smart way you can just skip to the end of the uh, video and i am i will be doing the shortcut method or the smart way of doing it in the end right now i'm just explaining the whole thing okay so the question says that the reaction is given so is that h2o in grams uh, sorry sorry h2o gas and h2 gas plus half gives ha h2 gas plus half o2 okay and it has been given that the equilibrium constant it's not it's, we have to find out basically the equilibrium constant kp depends on the degree of dissociation which is given as alpha and it is mentioned to us that alpha is uh, much much less than 1 so we have to find out the dependence of equilibrium constant kp on the degree of dissociation and the total pressure p okay and these are the given four options okay so now let us uh, uh, now we'll find out the number of moles of the uh, total number of moles and the number of moles of each reactant and product now uh, before you question me that why am i calculating the total number of moles just bear with me i'll you'll definitely come to know in the end of the video okay so the let's say at time t equal to 0 the number of moles of h2o is 1 of uh, n of h2 and half o2 is zero because there is no reaction that is taking place at time t equal to zero now let's say at time t equal to t h2o dissociates into h2 and o2 half o2 right so basically h2o one mole of h2o gives one mole of h2 and half mole of o2 so at time t at some time t so one mole of h2o dissociates so we so alpha is the dissociation constant so 1 minus alpha so so basically uh, from one mole of h2o some moles uh, some moles have been dissociated into h2 and half o2 so if alpha if alpha moles of h2 have been dissociated then we'll get alpha moles of h2 and we'll get half alpha moles of o2 because Uh, one mole of h2o gives half mole of o2 so if alpha moles of h2o have been dissociated then we will get half alpha moles of o2 so if we find out the total number of moles at time t equal to t then it is basically 1 minus alpha plus alpha plus half alpha which gives us 1 plus half alpha okay okay fine now what we do is we find out the mole fraction now mole fraction is what the uh, given number of, so for example we need to find out the mole fraction of h2o so the mole fraction of h2o is nothing but number of moles of h2o upon total number of moles now what are the total number of moles that we have found found out the total number of moles is equal to 1 plus half alpha and 1 minus alpha is the number of moles of h2o okay so 1 minus alpha upon 1 plus 2 alpha similarly for mole fraction of h2 will be number of moles of h2 alpha upon total number of moles 1 plus half alpha and similarly mole fraction of o2 will be number of moles of o2 half alpha upon total number of moles that is 1 plus half alpha okay now what is kp kp is nothing but uh, it is the uh, partial pressure of the products upon the partial pressure of the rea reactant uh, raised to the power the coefficient okay so over here now remember the partial pressure pressure is only calculated for gases so had there been solid in any one of these uh, 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 compounds then we would have not calculated the partial pressure for that particular compound but since all of them are gases so we need to find we, we need to put the partial pressures of each of the following uh, molecules in the uh, kp equation so we can see half half uh, o2 so that so first we calculate in the numerator the product so this is partial pressure of o2 to the power half because the coefficient of o2 is half into uh, partial pressure of h2 and there is only one mole so there is raised to the power 1 basically and raised to the power 1 is nothing but the number itself okay similarly 
uh, upon the partial pressure of H two O, and H two also has one num one mole, so that means P H two is also equal to itself. Okay. Now, now the concept why I was finding the mole fraction was because partial pressure is equal to mole fractions into total pressure. Okay, and if you see that the uh, that we need to find K P in terms of total pressure. Okay, it's given Kp in terms of total pressure. We do not need to find Kp in terms of partial pressure. That's why there was a need to uh, to introduce total pressure, and total pressure could only be introduced if we multiply it by mole fraction. Okay, so now what we do is, so Kp is equal to we write the mole fraction. So mole fraction for O2 was what half alpha upon one plus half alpha. Okay, so we we write here half alpha. Upon one plus half alpha into p. Uh, sorry for my handwriting. This is into p to the power half. Similarly, mole fractions of uh, H2. Mole fraction of H2 is what? Alpha upon one plus two alpha. So alpha upon one plus two alpha into pressure p. Okay. And then coming on to pH2O. So the mole fraction for pH2O was half alpha upon one plus two alpha. So uh, so this is equal to. Uh, sorry. One minus alpha upon one plus two alpha partial pressure of H two. So that means one minus alpha upon one plus two alpha into the total pressure P. So if we solve this, now you can you you do not need to consider these terms because we need to find the propor proportionality. So you can just skip this half. Okay. So that means K P is now proportional to alpha into P to the power half into alpha P upon one plus half alpha three by two because. This was one plus half alpha one by two, and this was one plus half alpha. So one plus one by two becomes three by two. Upon this term, one minus alpha upon one plus half alpha into p. So this implies this is proportional to alpha p three by two. Again, one by two plus one becomes three by two. Upon now we what we do is we solve the denominator for both of them. So this term goes and uh, goes up over here. And if we divide one plus half alpha by one plus half alpha three by two, we get one plus half alpha to the power half into one minus alpha p. Okay. Just uh, if you are if it's, if I am going too fast, just pause the video once. It's very simple maths. You can easily calculate it. Okay. And if you have any doubts, you can just put it down in the comment box. Okay. So if we solve this, now what happens is it has been given to us. That the alpha is much much less than one. Now this is where we use it. So in the denominator, what we are getting one plus half alpha. So one since alpha is much much less than one, so half of alpha will almost be negli negligible in comparison to one. So we can write one plus half alpha is equal to one only. Similarly, one minus alpha is also be also can be written equal to one because alpha is much much smaller than one, so it can be neglect neglected. So this term also becomes one. This term also becomes one. So what we are left with in denominator is only the pressure. So alpha p three by two upon pressure. So that gives us alpha three by two p one by two. Okay. And this. So the second option is the correct option. Now you see this question has been like even if you knew the concept, you know calculating this whole thing would have taken a lot of effort. Now I'll tell you the smart work on how to do it. Okay. So. If you okay, I'll just tell you the options once. So in the options, you see the you forget the alpha term, you see the pressure term. So in all the four options, the pressure terms are different. So here it is given it is proportional to p. Here it is given it is proportional to three by two. Over here it's given to be proportional to one by two, and over here it is given to be proportional to p square. Now what I have given is K P is equal to partial pressure of O two to the power half. Into partial pressure of H2 upon partial pressure of H2O. Now, what is the formula for partial pressure? It is mole fraction into total pressure. Okay. So for now, for once, just forget about mole fraction. You know that the partial partial pressure is equal to the total pressure. Okay. So what you do is, over here you write Kp is equal to. You forget the mole fraction. Okay. So you know that um, uh, the partial pressure is like I said, partial pressure is. Uh, is equal to mole fraction to total pressure, and now you have forgotten the mole fraction term. So you can write Kp is equal to p to the power half. Right. So it is p to the power half into p upon p. Okay.
uh, now the mole fraction term is responsible for giving you the value of alpha okay and this is the uh, the calculating the value of alpha is a very tedious task like i have uh, just shown it to you so if you f neglect the mole fraction term and you just uh, concentrate on the pressure so that means p3 by 2 upon p this gives you p1 by 2 and since all the values of p are different so you can uh, actually very easily identify that this is the answer p half p to the power half you are not even concerned with the value of alpha so this is basically smart work now you solve this very question that would have taken you like for example 5 minutes in just about 5 seconds so that makes a lot of difference so you need to see the uh, options first uh, apply your mind and then solve the answer had there been uh, two values of uh, same pressure yeah then you definitely would have would have had the need to calculate the uh, alpha value even then also you should first go for this because for example if if p3 by 2 was given in two of the options then you might think okay p3 by 2 is the answer so i need, need to calculate alpha but if you if, if you would have calculated then it would have come out to be p half so it doesn't necessarily mean that even if two pressures are given to be equal uh, that you need to calculate the value of alpha you first go for the value of pressure uh, in terms of pressure and you find out the answer in terms of pressure and then if it comes out to be the same then you go for the value of alpha